I'm uh, Anthony Johnson here at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and I am a member of the Department of Physics and the Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering and Director of CASPER, the Center for Advanced Studies in Photonics Research. But I'd like to talk about a uh, engineering, NSF-supported engineering research center called MIRTH that we are a part of, my group is. Uh, MIRTH is a Mid-Infrared Technologies for Health and Environment and it is a National Science Foundation supported engineering research center which began, uh, we started receiving support in 2006. The lead institution is Princeton University and the director is Claire Gamakel. We have Princeton, UMBC, Johns Hopkins University, Texas A&M, Rice University, and City University of New York. So there are six institutions uh, that contribute uh, various types of expertise to the mission uh, of MIRTH. And the mission of MIRTH is basically to measure trace gases that are useful in homeland security, in medical applications, and environmental studies as well. Uh, and the, I, what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the fact that many of these trace gases that are of interest have uh, absorption resonances in the mid infrared. And the, um, the core technology in this case is utilizing quantum cascade lasers that were invented in 1994 by Federico Capasso and colleagues at Bell Laboratories. If you have uh, uh, excess ammonia in your, in, as you exhale, then that gives you some information about the state of your kidney and liver. And so the technique that is used today is breath analysis, where you breathe into a bag and, uh, uh, to collect your breath, and you take it and have it analyzed at a mass spectrometer or so forth. But that takes time and uh, a lot of effort to actually make the measurement. What we're hoping to do here is be able to make these measurements with a with a sensor and laser that's about the size of a cell phone. So for example, ammonia has a, an absorption resonance around in the uh, eight to nine micron part of the spectrum. And if you were to measure the absorption of ammonia at telecom wavelengths, say for example 1.5 microns, you would gain a three orders of magnitude in absorption by going to the mid-infrared. And there's where we increase our sensitivity to measure small amounts in the parts per billion to parts per trillion of various um, trace gases that are important. And many of them have resonances in the infrared. We are currently in my training laboratory for my students, both graduate and undergraduate. And one of the things that we do in our laboratory is we, in general, we do ultra-fast optics and optoelectronics. <clears throat> And so to get uh, students up to speed, one of the things I have them do is learn a little bit about the lasers, a little bit about nonlinear optics, and, and actually build a device that will uh, actually measure the pulse duration of, of uh, ultra-short pulses. The reason this is important is that I, um, we already know how this laser works. This is, we, we know what the pulse duration is, and this is a good way for students to be trained, and that is to measure a known quantity. Uh, and once you do that, I think you, you have a lot of confidence to move on to more complicated structures, uh, new materials, and so forth. And I like to do it in the green because they can see the beam. Hi, I'm Elaine Lalane. I'm a physicist and a research scientist here at CASPER, the Center for Advanced Studies for Photonic Research. Femtosecond laser system consists of a tie sapphire oscillator, which is tunable from um, 750 nanometers to 900 nanometers. We then, right now, it's operating at 800 nanometers. We take the 800 nanometers and we amplify it. So right now, it goes from energy per pulse of nanojoules to microjoules. And then we take that and we uh, couple that into an op optical parametric amplifier, which allows us to extend the wavelength out to two microns. This OPA, the optical parametric amplifier, emits two wavelengths. These are the two wavelengths that we use right now set at 1.3 micron and 2 micron. We use that to generate um, the mid-IR beam. We receive funding from National Science Foundation for, of MESearch 
major research instrumentation grant to actually build a tunable femtosecond mid-IR source um, in which we actually designed and constructed the system. Also, um, the system will allow us to look at gain dy dynamic of quantum cascade lasers, giving us femtosecond uh, time resolution, temporal resolution. Also, we can use that to look at uh, quantum cascade structures, um, interesting materials that have properties in the mid infrared that will allow um, our collaborators at MERT to construct uh, different sensor prototypes or devices for um, health, medical, um, environmental, or homeland security properties. So we basically use this to do material characterizations. So my group is, because of our expertise in ultra-fast uh, lasers and so forth, uh, got involved to actually build a tunable mid-infrared source, tunable femtosecond mid-infrared source, so we can look at some of the carry dynamics in these novel materials and see if we can work with the growers and give them some feedback on how to improve the quantum efficiency of the lasers and so forth by understanding what happens to the electrons and the photons that we're, that we're trying to use to measure trace gases.